On September 27th, 2021, the Purple Star Cruise Liner reported missing on January 18th, 2012, and believed to be lost at sea, was found adrift in the middle of the Indian Ocean. There were no signs of external damage, apart from rust, which no doubt is a result of the surrounding seawater. Those who found the ship reported it was filled with skeletons scattered across its six floors, bow to stern. Those who found the ship also found this manuscript, alongside some official documents in the bridge, before going back to the mainland to report their find. Until now, October 15th, 2021, the ship has not been located again by the Coast Guard. My name is Isaac Del Rosario, half American, half Filipino, 24 years old and a freelance photographer and grocery store cashier from Rock Springs, Wyoming. To whoever finds this, please find my grandparents and my fiance and tell them I'm dead, but please tell it gently. There is a spell. A curse that is harder and harder to ignore, and I'm afraid I'll wake up no longer knowing who I am or what I'm doing. It was supposed to be my dream vacation, a time to get away from all my problems and focus on having fun. It took me nearly three months of saving up on both my jobs to buy a ticket for a 14-day cruise. Aside from the usual stuff, to bring clothes and a toothbrush, I also brought all my photography gear, hoping to get some wonderful pictures along the way. I traveled all the way to California to finally get on the ship, and from there, I would spend 14 days in the Pacific. Sounds like a dream vacation, right? It certainly was for the most part. The ship? had this amazing buffet, you see, and each ticket holder got one free trip to the buffet every day. It was all part of the expenses, so you bet I ate my fill, and I came back day after day. Any additional trips and you'll have to pay, but as someone who ate nothing but cups of ramen and cheap burgers, one trip per day is enough. There were a lot of other things to do too. Swimming in the pool on the top deck, complete with its own bar that served both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Below deck, there are a ton of stores selling all kinds of things, from clothes to perfume to souvenirs. A gym, but only had cable machines. A movie theater. And an adult-only club. I spent my time mostly in the movies, and in the club, met some lovely guys and gals there, who were either on their honeymoon, or college kids celebrating their graduation. There was this girl though, Jenny is her name, whose boyfriend apparently slept with someone else, and broke up with him when she found out. She begged me to stay at my room since her ex and the new girl were screwing in their room. So she had nowhere to stay. Can't even get anything from there. So all she had was her cell phone and a couple of dollars in her pocket. Jenny and I became fast friends during the last four days of our 14 day cruise. We'd eat together, relax by the pool, and watch movies in the theater. She also got all her stuff from her ex's room, thanks to my help, so she was able to at least spend some time completely away from him. Guess that's something I guess. When the final day came, both of us expected to see the coastline, but it never came. We were scheduled to disembark about 10am, but from sunrise to sunset, all we saw was the bright blue ocean, 
Apparently, we weren't the only ones to realize this. As a lot of passengers complained to the staff, the staff said something about the headwinds and will be there later than expected. I was fine as long as they didn't charge me, but Jenny was livid. She had a job as an accountant and was expected to be back the following day, but in the end, there was nothing we could do. And so, the next day came, and still no coastline, and the next, and the next. It got so bad, to where the captain made an announcement on the PA. An announcement I remember every word of. He sounded off, like a man who was sick, but had to speak. His voice was raspy but he tried to speak calmly. The passengers. Unfortunately, we are suffering equipment problems. Rest assured, you will be compensated by the company. Please enjoy your vacation. Yeah, you can imagine how well that turned out. There was a mini riot that happened for an hour or so. When the passengers pounded on the bridge door, but they were so displaced. I wasn't there when it happened. I was drinking my fourth shot of whiskey in the club, along with Jenny, who now had a grim expression when she thought about her job. In the following days that happened, something changed. The people who were complaining and the rioting started to return to a vacation mood. The pool and club began to fill up with people, and the staff went to work like nothing is wrong. It was certainly weird. I thought they just accepted that there was nothing they could do, so they might as well relax. But this went on for way too long. Curiosity got the better of me and I started asking around about how relaxed they are, and all of them gave the same answer, in the same raspy tone as the captain in his announcement. It's vacation. Relax. You can't complain while on vacation. Just think of it as more vacation days. Now, I know something is up. It's like a switch clicked in their heads. One day, they were complaining about how they wanted to get home. Then the next, they were acting like it's the first day of the cruise. I treaded carefully after that, observing as more and more people switch back to a vacation mindset. By then, I was starting to panic. Who wouldn't? Another thing I noticed was the food in the buffet seems to never run out. By now, it's nearly been a month since I last saw land, but the food in the trays is as plentiful as the first days. Same with the drinks at the club and at the poolside bar. They seem to be stocked no matter how many bottles get emptied. Got curious and tried a bite and a drink and it tasted off. The smell is there. The look is there. The food oozes juice when you prick it with a fork, and the drinks tasted as high quality as before, but it's just off. I can't explain it, but there was something in the back of my mind that told me to stop, and so I did. Eating and drinking only when I couldn't take the hunger and thirst any longer. I hightailed it back to my room for a nap, to try and sleep my way out of it. Instead, I dreamed about… something. I honestly can't remember anything about it, but a feeling of relaxation, a feeling that I need to swim in the pool, or get drunk at the club anything to get me far away from the mundane feeling of normal life. When I woke up, I felt a warm feeling on my chest, 
for a split second before it disappeared. When I went to sleep the following night, I got the same feeling as before. A desire for relaxation, but something about it made my body jolt back up. I have no idea what, but it made me wide awake, like I was in the middle of a marathon. My heart was beating way harder than it usually did, and my hands were gripping the bed sheets until they turned pale. It wasn't the end though, as Jenny walked into the bedroom completely naked. She looked like she was ready for a wild time. Then I realized I was naked too. I rushed to put on some clothes, but Jenny stopped me. Why rush? It's vacation. I pushed her away, got dressed in underwear, and left. I was sure people would start staring, but everybody carried on with their business. When I asked someone about how I looked, they all said what I feared. It's vacation, dude. Dress how you want. Ha. Found a girl, did ya? That's how you spend a vacation. I ran away to the restricted area of the ship and hid in a closet. What is happening? I asked myself. Either everyone was nuts, or I was, or both. I stayed there for hours, terrified to leave until I fell asleep. Again, same feeling of wanting a vacation, but this time I was tempted, like really tempted, almost like an angel was pulling me to heaven. It took me all of my wits to say no. When I woke up, I was back in my room. The TV was on and there was a bottle of whiskey on the floor. I looked at the ceiling, thinking what the hell just happened. Then I realized what just happened. Jenny and I were naked on the bed and she was watching TV. She smiled when I woke up and I remember feeling real sick. Good morning. Ready for another day of vacation? To Martina, my fiance, and anyone else reading this, I did not sleep with Jenny. Honest to God, I did not. I left but naked and ran until my legs couldn't move anymore. I would have been happy if someone said something about me being naked, literally anything other than vacation. But it never did, and now, remembering that dream from last night, I think I'm close to losing my mind completely. I'm writing this in the bridge. The crew is manning the ship like I'm not even there, and I'm even using the captain's personal diary to write this. When I'm done, I'll leave this along with some of the important papers the people here use again and again. Chances are, if someone finds this, they'll want the ship's papers first. Please, if you are reading this, get off the ship. Don't think otherwise. Just leave. Leave and never look back. If you are military, please burn it. This ship belongs to the bottom of the Pacific.